finally my uh my walls kind of match the the color of the season and uh it's good that you are here um a few announcements uh this week uh we're going to have bible study again at seven o'clock we're in the book of acts uh via zoom there will be a zoom social ministry meeting uh wednesday at four uh and friday uh, at 10 a.m we have a worship committee meeting so we're uh we're going to be zooming right along this week um and then back to uh worship service uh next sunday via zoom uh, uh i just uh i want to thank rob and uh the, the leadership team for giving me a, a day up yesterday they had a council meeting and i had a chance to go see our grandson tolly and uh it was pretty cool let me tell you that so we were it was just real exciting it was good to be able to do that finally so good good stuff um and i don't know that's about all i have if there are other messages that uh our team would like to share dan yeah can you hear me yes okay good um we the back to the pews committee met a couple times this last couple of weeks and um we have a few things that we need to accomplish before we're ready to return to in-person worship but just so everyone's aware our general guidance that we're following is the state's safe start plan which i believe our region is in phase four which allows for gatherings of 10 or fewer and we are aiming to return to in-person worship once we reach phase five which allows for 50 or fewer people gathered indoors and but still calls for safe social distancing and mask wearing and, and stuff like that um so i don't know when that's going to occur none of us do but we're sort of setting a goal of july 1st as our uh as our goal when we want to have everything ready just in case the state allows it um, that being said, we're looking for, and I know it's hard to find, but we're looking for donations of wipes and hand sanitizer, like Clorox wipes or Lysol wipes and hand sanitizer to set out in the church for when we do return to, to worship, we're going to be asking members to wipe down the pews in front of them and, and uh, you know, keep hands clean and stuff like that. So if you happen to have extra wipes and you would like to donate them to TLC, or if you happen to be grocery shopping or or whatever, and you and you find some and you want to donate them to TLC, let me know. Or just drop them off at the church uh, if you have a key and, and you can get in. That's it. All right. Thanks, Dan. Uh, any other messages? It looks like there are not. We're back in Michigan. Hey, the Quins are back in Michigan. Yay. That's great. Yay. <laughs> All right. Welcome home. Thanks. Thank you. Ever living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one. And we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith. Defend us from all adversity and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Just a sec. <laughs> Are we unmuted, Rob? I can't tell anything. Okay, good. Something happened to our screen and I don't know, I can't see if I'm muted or not. Um, we realized just five minutes ago that Julia and I actually have the wrong first song. And since I'm not at home with all my music, we're going to have to sing the wrong first song for you today. And then we'll do Morning Has Broken next week. Okay, so we're going to do We Are an Offering Now. Feel free to sing along if you know the words. Um, there aren't that many of them, so... Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed, but by your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve in the newness of life. Amen. Beloved God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It started when God said, let there be light. God called the light day and the darkness night. Then God said, let there be a dome to separate the waters. And God called it sky. This took place on the second day of creation. After this, God said, let us separate dry land from the waters and called the dry land earth. The waters were called seas. Seeing that everything was coming along nicely, God said, Let the earth put forth all kinds of vegetation. All of this occurred on the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the sky that will separate night from day and help serve as a guide for the seasons and years. When the, within this, there were two great lights created, one to serve as the guide for day and the lesser one to serve as the guide of the night. This marked the end of the fourth day. Next, God created the birds of the air and fish of the sea. These creatures were blessed to be fruitful and multiply. And so ended the fifth day. On the following day, God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind. Then God said, let us make humankind in our own image. Let them be fruitful and multiply and serve stewards of all creation, so that life may be sustained and flourish. Finally, on the seventh day, God rested from all the work accomplished in creation. These are the generations of heaven and earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Paul writes, finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal and agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The Thanks. word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, 
I am with you always to the end of the age. That's the Lord. Well, uh, this morning I thought I would do more of a, a sermon that I guess would be almost more of a contemplation or kind of a meditation, recognizing that uh, uh, all of our hearts are troubled in a variety of different ways because of the stuff that is going on in the world today. And uh, whether it be COVID-19 or trying to understand racial unrest or economic issues or political things, there's all kinds of stuff going on. I'm just trying to figure out how do we do church. We have a lot of things uh, outside of us and inside of us that are in a state of relative uh, unrest. And uh, I went at it pretty hard last week. I thought I would try to dial it back a little bit and, and offer more of a contemplation or more of a meditation. And so what, what I'd like to do this morning is invite you to imagine that you are one of the 11 disciples left in the gospel message today. Now, we're not going to go though all the way back 2,000 years ago to Galilee. What we're going to do is stay planted in the year 2020, but still imagine we are one of those 11 disciples left, and Jesus, the risen Christ, has in fact invited us to hike up a mountain to see him and visit with him. And so you are one of the 11, and you are at the foot of a reasonably large mountain, and you are filled with anxiousness about the days in which we live in and are attempting to process it, and you begin your hike up the mountain. And as you hike a while, your breath is getting, it's getting a little harder to breathe, but you see around you these beautiful pine trees and all kinds of foliage, and you can smell the pines, you can smell the forest, you can hear uh, rumblings of wildlife around you, and uh, the breathing this air in is, is uh, it's very intoxicating, uh, but the, your breath is getting harder. But the other part of this, as you are walking, you recognize the footing is not as even as walking on a sidewalk, that you have to pay much more attention to each step along the way. And so consequently, your focus on your footing and being taken up by all that is around you, you begin to feel that the anxieties of life are starting to gradually melt away. And you keep hiking. You keep going up. You take a break here or there to see a certain type of a vista, to see a little more of God's creation from a very unique angle, an angle that you could never find on just straight land. And you keep walking up and up, and soon uh, the trees are becoming more sparse, they're becoming smaller, there's less and less foliage, and more and more sunlight. It's getting warmer, you're getting tired, but yet by now, everything that you left behind has been left behind. You're totally engaged and immersed in the experience of hiking up this mountain with the anticipation of getting to the summit and visiting with the risen Christ. Finally, you get to the top the mountain. And you just, you breathe a sigh of relief, and at the same time, you are breathless by what it is you see. And Jesus begins to speak to you. He says, welcome, peace be with you. It looks like you all made it in pretty good shape. 
Jesus knew by inviting you to walk up a mountain, he would have your undivided attention because of just the act of doing that would clear your head. And so there he is. And he says, you know, I am so glad you are here this morning. You have been chosen. You are gifted and you have the ability to take the shalom out into the world. He says, I want you to remember, I want you to remember a few things. I want you to remember that it is important for you to always love the Lord your God with all of your, everything you have. Love God, but also love your neighbor as yourself. You must take care of yourself. You must recognize that you are precious to God's eye and that you must be taken care of. But at the same time, I want you to love your neighbor and remember now what I said about the neighbor. The neighbor is every living human being. We do not distinguish in the kingdom your job and your mission is to love all people, not just your family, not just those that agree with you on this or that. Your job is to love everyone. At least you forget what love is, let me remind you. First of all, you are to live a life of continual forgiveness. Remember when I, one of you asked me, how many times am I supposed to forgive this person? One, two, five, ten? And what did I say? I said, 70 times 70, you are to forgive and to forgive and to forgive and to forgive. Not only people, but yourself as well. God loves you beyond measure. We are challenged in a variety of ways, and we must recognize that we need new life. You all understand it in some ways in terms of the baptism experience, the new life through baptism. But every day you're given new life, and forgiveness is essential to this, you see. But it's more than forgiveness. You are invited to be merciful. You are invited to share God's love and the love that you have from God with others without any expectation of something in return. You are to freely give, to be merciful with all people. But it doesn't stop there. You are to also be compassionate to recognize that there are those in the world who are suffering from a number of things. It could be physical illness. It could be uh, being oppressed because of a, a person's race or, or religion or ethnicity. Uh, it could be any number of things, but you are charged with sharing God's love with the brokenhearted. It's something you must do. And finally, and this is the hardest one of all, 10 times harder than the other three put together. It's the one that got me hung on a cross. You are to press justice. You are to recognize when there are those who are oppressed because of who they are, by some other force that you are to speak out against this. You are not to accept it, even if it means you have to sacrifice something of yourself. We need to be aware if we have benefited in any way, shape, or form from the oppression of others. And this is a challenge, not easy to do. I will tell you that. You saw what happened to me. 
But my friends, these are the forces and sources of love that we, I want you to share with this world. And so Jesus delivers the message and then disappears. Never to be seen again. And you stand up on top of this mountain, and for the first time, you recognize that the wind is blowing, yeah, maybe 40 miles an hour up there. Just a nice, stiff wind on top of a mountain, much greater than we would normally expect on straight land. And you feel it. You feel the breeze, and it's only right through you. you, you the, the words of Jesus are resonating in you in a way that uh, you've never experienced before. It's when that is blowing, you are starting to recognize that in some way, this wind is the dimension of the Holy Spirit that is there to guide you uh, throughout your days, to help you stay the course to peace. And you take one final look around the amazing sights that you are able to see of God's creation, coupled with the words of Jesus, and you start to walk back down the mountain. One step at a time, from the heights, you start to move down. Before you know it, the forest has engulfed you again. And you finally finish your trip, and you're back off the mountain with the message, and with a hope, and with new life, recognizing that the Spirit will always be with you. Remembering what Jesus always said before an important breakthrough, fear not, I will be with you. And with all of that, you are ready to take the next steps of being God's hands and feet in a world that desperately needs it. Amen. Let us boldly proclaim what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> and now is a time where we share joys and concerns. Who would like to, to do that? I have Who's one. Concerned? Yes, Laura. Um, so many of you knew that my father back in March had surgery for bladder cancer. He had his bladder and one of his kidneys removed. Um, he has done great so far with that. He's almost fully recovered from that surgery. Um, at this point, he just had scans to see if there was anything else, um, any other cancers. And everything looked really good, but they still want to do some preventative chemo. So he's starting chemo um, on Tuesday, and he'll have eight rounds of chemo throughout the summer. And hopefully he does well with it. So just prayers for my dad, Bob McDonald, that he does well with the chemo and that it takes care of everything. So thank you. Thank you, Laura. Are there any other? Uh... I, I have two. Madeline, yes. These are uh, uh, joys. And um, uh, our daughter and um, her hus husband, they have been allowed now to see James. Mm. And it's been a great experience for him. He just has really had a rough time. And he was so happy to see him. So a little bit of joy in his life brings him some joy, too. And uh, also our little bonds, we have two now, come and visit <laughs> underneath the palm pine tree next door to us. And they sit in the high weeds and sleep most of the time. Mm -hmm. So we're having something fun to watch, too. So thank you. They're about 50 feet away. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Well, fun. Good stuff. Anything else? I just we survived. Not... We survived virtual school, and school year is officially done now. Yay! <laughs> A survivor. Yay! 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 Congratulations. That is good. That's a good thing. Bergens, uh, <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> Mary, she's uh, she's muted herself somehow. <laughs> yeah, they're unmuted. We just can't hear them. Okay, can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. You now. Okay. We're asking for prayers for our daughter Susan, who was ex who had expected to have a serious surgery this past week, but in the preliminary things you have to go through, it was found there may be a heart problem that has to be dealt with first. So Tuesday she'll be having a heart, heart cath. So we would like to ask for prayers for her to get through this. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would like to, we have a um, sick granddaughter in California. She's running a temp of 104. Mm -hmm. just, um, just prayers for uh, a good, uh, safe recovery. Mm. Right. Lots to pray over. All right. If that is it, let us lift all of these concerns uh, into the prayers of the church. She's muted. Second, I, can't I can't unmute her for some reason, Dan. You're going to have to unmute her. I'm going to mute everybody again, but I can't. Dan, you're muted. Wait, here she comes. Okay. I, will, I will begin again. Okay, let me let me mute everybody. And Dan, you're going to have to unmute uh, Janet. 
I don't know that I'll be able to, but Jan, you can unmute yourself. I think I unmuted myself. Can you hear me now? And unmute okay. yourself one more time. Okay, how's this now? Let's just give it a try. Okay. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, deacons, and all the baptized in sharing your life-giving good news with all the world. Strengthen us to be bold in our proclamation. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Inspire us to see waterways, plant life, birds, fish, insects, and mammals, and call them good. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage the leaders of this and every land to seek peace, equality, and unity. Instill wisdom in advocates who work toward justice in often ignored communities. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of care, you created us in your image. Help us see your likeness in one another. Open our eyes to see and attend to all who face oppression and suffering. Console, heal, and nourish all in need, especially those we name aloud or in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of companionship, you accompany us, this body of faith. As the rhythms of summer begin, protect all who travel. Renew all who will enjoy a time of Sabbath and shelter all who will not be protected from the sun's heat. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for all the saints of all time and in our lives. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Now is a time in our service um, where normally we would have an offering and we obviously don't do that with Zoom, uh, but it is a time for me to uh, just encourage you uh, and thank you for your continued offerings and that the church, uh, you know, need, needs that support to continue on. So um, we thank you for that and, and are grateful for, for that support. Uh, we'll now move on to uh, our Holy Meal. The Lord be with you. And the night our Lord was turned over, he uh, took bread and broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. And then he took the cup and he said, this is my cup, my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this and remember me. We know that with this cup and with this bread, we draw closer to Jesus Christ. And so together, let us pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
This is the body of Christ broken for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth, sustained by these gifts, so that we may share your neighborly love with all, through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in all his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who else so sets free? Oh, it's free indeed. Of my child of God. Yes, I am. He lost his ransom, me, his grace was while I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, it's free and deep. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. In the fall. Chosen, not forsaken. 
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.